All right, welcome back, war gamers, history buffs, potentially military historians, or any other historians or really curious cats while you're out there. Greetings, hope you're doing well today. I'm here with another Let's Play video. We're playing Eurofront, second edition, I believe, or first edition, I'm not sure. I know that East Front had second edition. We're playing Eurofront on the Vassal engine. Continuing off a campaign that I've been doing now for uh, few, a few days, maybe a few weeks now. We are now doing, I think it's the twelfth or thirteenth turn. I think it's technically the fourteenth turn so far in the game. So I've been playing for about a couple of weeks, and we're just trying to make a video one month of the game per video. Hopefully, those some of you have been watching. I think, um, and and if you if you made it thus far in the series, I'm. You know, cool. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, we're going to keep playing because, you know, pretty good game. Definitely a game that's very algorithmically intensive for any any of you algorithmers out there. This is definitely a game that has a lot of that. Themed over with a lot of war to uh, attention to detail. I, I like to use the term um, historically authentic. I don't know if it's historically realistic because... You know, it's hard to say because how do you measure? How, how are you actually going to measure whether or not it's realistic? This is the power, I think, of like some sort of measurement method. Um, but from speaking as someone who's been playing a bunch of World War II games and simulators over the years, um, never really was very good at them, but I tried my best. And then as someone who's always just been really, really curious about World War II for some reason, probably because of the cool maps, uh, I got to say that this game is really well made. It's it's so far probably been the most uh, in, what's the word, immersive, in, uh, informative uh, game of all the War 2 games that I've ever played. It's probably been the most informative one, I would argue. Probably the, other, the only other one that comes to mind is Isle 2 Stormovic, which is a flight simulator that I used to play. Uh, 1946 was the one I played. And that game really opened my eyes to, like, the performance of fighter, uh, mostly the fighter aircraft in World War II, but also a few medium bombers. Really, really cool. Um, I, I, I learned a lot about the BF-109, the Focke-Wulf-190, the Mustang, all that good stuff. Maybe in the future, uh, I get back into flight simulators, although I'm pretty sure the best way to do it is get, get yourself a, a good headset. I don't know if I'm ready for all of that. But uh, I've seen the videos on YouTube. They're absolutely incredible. Um, and and the, the, the realism is incredible, right? You have all these controls and whatnot. But this game is board game. We are turn-based. You know, so it's more like RPG than RTS. Uh, you know, it's a turn-based game um, instead of real-time strategy. And also, you know, we're using these blocks that represent basically the size of cores, more or less. About 100,000 troops per block, give or take. Um, but, you know, this mechanic has been used at different scales. So some games will zoom out, show you a bigger picture, um, less pieces on the board. The map may be uh, cover all, the whole world than, rather than just Europe. And then you can go the other way. And that, that's kind of like there is a much deeper ocean of war gaming. But I'll tell you now, some of those games just look like they take months to complete, quite frankly. Them, you know, uh, and then you have so many more units. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds and all that. But for now, this game is going to keep us plenty busy. Let's go ahead and start the turn. Um, we're going to switch over now to uh, September 1942. So actually, this may be our 15th turn. Yeah. So uh, we did August. August was a very eventful month. Uh, German army. I was very impressed by the German army on the last turn. Uh, they achieved maybe not some grand winning strategies, but they did, I think, achieve some pretty good. Um, I think they did achieve some pretty good, uh, what do we want to call it? Uh, some pretty good, just like, uh, tactical wins. I mean, we took Leningrad, so we had the battle of Leningrad in 1942 and it only lasted like, it only lasted a month. Okay. Uh, by the way, Leningrad is a bigger city than Stalingrad and the German army took it. So I, I don't know what I did wrong with the Soviets. Maybe I should have left another army protecting Leningrad. I think the Battle of the no was was clearly the big defeat for the Soviets. And I don't think I, I could have built more units in Leningrad. And I always forget that I can build more units in the city of Leningrad. Um, but I only had one army defending the city. And maybe it wasn't enough. So that was a big 
failure on, on the part of the Soviet army. And hopefully we've learned that, that lesson with the Soviets. Um, we're going to do the German production, though. The Germans have gained the access to Third Reich specifically, which was like, you know, trying to consume all the resources of Europe during that time. Uh, our production has gone up to 89. We've gained 10 production points just on the recent turns, taking Rostov, Maikop, Bryansk, and Leningrad. So I think of all the formations that have benefited on the on the last turn, the last string of victories, I would say the German here, right, the uh, German army, Ost here, is of all the formations in the last turn, the one that's probably changed the most strategically is the German army because we've we've made good progress. So let's go ahead and spend those extra 10 production points on this fortress unit that I have here in Smolensk. I'm going to build that up. You can you can kind of get a sense as to what I'm doing. Keep in mind that this fortress unit has triple defense. So it pretty much is a mini Leningrad of sorts, but for the Germans, uh, just a heavy fortified line. I'm not sure what it would actually entail, um, but maybe something akin to uh, the Battle of Kursk. You know, we're talking like minefields and anti-tank ditches, lots of artillery guns, uh, lots of artillery mostly, uh, maybe bunkers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's that. Uh, we now have 79 production. Let's go ahead and build up all our HQs. That's just always a good strategic investment. So I think I'm going to build on all five. One, two, three. Yeah, we're going to build up on all five. So from 79 now down to 29 production. So yeah, we've just spent um, about roughly 60 production points just now. So that leaves us with 29. It's just enough to pretty much build up what I would think would be our infantry. That can build up eight infantry or seven infantry rather. So I'll build up these guys. That's one, two. Uh, production table, right? Uh, by the way, our unit data axis costs four production points per step. 28, you know, you do the math, four by seven, that's 28. I have 29 production points. That's going to leave me with one left over, which I'm just going to toss out. Uh, but yeah, we just spent two, right? Did I do that right? Yeah, I spent two. That leaves me with five more. Uh, let's see here. Uh, probably, yeah, I think just build these northern units, I guess. And then all the other units, I'm thinking, I think all the other units I just want to transfer over to, uh, I want to get as many units in the southern front, I think, built up. I mean, we gotta, we got to figure out what, where do we want to attack with the German army. I think the next objective probably will be Stalingrad. I think we may make a move on Stalingrad and perhaps even Voronezh. Try to take those two before we make a move on Moscow. I think that would make good sense. And also try to focus here in the deep south. Try to get Turkey in the war. So let's focus on that. So uh, if I have any, any level two units, I'll build them up. But I think all the other German units I'm going to leave behind at level three. So that leaves me, I've built up, I've, uh, so, so most of the German army is, is definitely uh, waning in its strength right now. That seems to be quite clear. Uh, so that's that. Um, what else can I do? I'm going to, that leaves me with uh, four more. Right, I spent three up there. Let's try to focus on four more. Try to figure out what units I want to build up. I think all these units are, most of these units are going to be static. Uh, unless I want to use them to a, an attack sequence. Hmm. So you know what, I'm going to go like one, two, one, two, three, four, like that. And then hopefully I can just transfer over however many full strength units. I don't have any full strength infantry, pretty much have none. But I do have some strong Panzer Corps that I could move over to the south. Keep in mind that it is the month of September. So, you know, we have this month of clear weather. And then um, now in the month of October, it's a 50-50 chance that we get mud. And if we get mud, you know, we're not going to be able to do much during that turn. So the German offensive is going to pretty much slow down. And then winter will eventually set in. And with winter, yes, we can still uh, operate on the eastern front. But... If, 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 we, if you thought in the summer our command units, our field, field HQs were limited in their ability to, to support, they're all going to be disrupted in the winter. So that's a minus one, which means that they are that much more limited. 
So it's going to be tough for the German army. Yes, we have a very powerful army right now, but it's going to be tough to protect this ever increasingly larger front from a potential Soviet counterattack, number one. And number two, um, we, our HQs are just extremely limited. So we're probably going to be focusing our, all our HQ ability to defend, I think, throughout the winter. That's what, that's what I would presume. Um, unless we can build up more HQs and send them over to the, to the east. Um, like, for example, OKW could have be, be sent over to the eastern front. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe even OBW send it over to the eastern front as well. Just try to maximize my HQs over here. I could use, like, two more, like, uh, army groups right now. You know, put, put one more in Kharkov and uh, have one more as a reserve. And I think we would be in much better, feeling a lot more confident to attack. Because right now, we just don't have enough. Like, I don't have any in the center because... I was, I was attacking here in the south. And so, yeah, we, we finished the German uh, production on the eastern front. Let's move over to the western front and go ahead and do this production. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, you know, I'm also going to do a diplomatic event to try to get. Uh, to try to get Finland. To uh, maybe join the Axis. I'm going to try to, or try to get the Finland production to switch over to the German production. And then we can get a few more production points. We would get three more. So, yeah, it's the equivalent of one more infantry per turn. Um, of course, that means the Finnish are not going to get much, right? Um, but, yeah, there, there is a rule for that to get Finland to join the Axis now that we've taken Leningrad. And I think we do want to do something, take advantage of that while we can. Um, so that's that. What else? Uh, Western Front production, let's see here. It is going to be uh, 17 production points on this turn. I think with the success that we had here in uh, near Alexandria, we're going to keep using OKW to support um, the North African group. Um, so we're going to go ahead and build this guy up. So that leaves us with seven. And then with the remaining seven, uh, let's build up a militia unit. And then let's go ahead and build up another infantry somewhere. Question is, is which one? And another question to know is, will the Allies try to do any landing in in Nor in, uh, in Holland? They they very 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 easily could, and if they do, they may succeed. Uh, we also get a fortress though, and I actually do want to put this fortress unit to good use. I really, really do. I'm gonna put this militia unit over here. And I actually I'm think I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is probably get this fortress unit. I think I want to send it back to Holland. I don't know how strong our defenses are in Holland. Uh, I know that the Allies are gonna gain more air support. You know, they I mean in theory they could uh blitz in, in, in there, but if they were to take that position, the real question is, is would that change the war strategically for them? Probably not. They could definitely gain a foothold in Holland, but it, I think it would be really hard for them to break out. We could just fortify all these areas, and it wouldn't be much of a problem. It would probably be a big stalemate in Holland, I would think, if the Allies did gain a foothold there. Uh, I'd rather that they just don't. So I'm thinking, let's just build this guy up here. And maybe we may even want to transfer that unit over to the Eastern Front, possibly. No, we'll build this guy up instead. All right, so that's it. Uh, Mediterranean Front production is uh, 25, I believe. All right, 25. So let's roll the dice. Got some, looks like pretty good rolls. Uh, 20. 20 exactly for the axis. That's a pretty solid number. I think it's, let's just go ahead and build up our Africa core, our uh, field HQ. Let's go ahead and build those up. Unless we want to build up uh, any of the frontline units, I'd rather that we have this field HQ at full strength. The only problem is that it costs 20 production points right now because it's in road supply. 
you know, it, its supply path is going through roads, and so it's it's uh, double the cost. So I can't build up any more frontline units. But the British pretty much have no more frontline units, as far as we can tell. They only have probably only two combat units left. So shouldn't be too hard for us to push forward with what we got. And then I think we should also try to uh, move up these Italian militia units. Try to get them to the front line as soon as possible. Try to have them enter Egypt as soon as possible. And then just get as many access reinforcements moving in that direction. I think there's a very clear incentive for us to do that. So yeah, that's that. Um, I think that's it for the axis. Let's switch over now to the ally production. I'm hoping, you know, this turn should be much faster than I think the last video I made. I was really getting into it in the last video about all the history and stuff. But here we're just here for, for good old gameplay. Um, we're going to go ahead and start, I think, with the Mediterranean front production with the British first. And they get to roll, uh, they have 30 production points. So that's going to be a roll of six dice each die representing five production points we're going to do that that's 10 what is that 10 plus 10 is i think is uh 10 plus 8 plus 2 that's 20 21 all together and with 21 what we would we want to spend on because i'll tell you now we really don't have enough to really build up any more units but i think it's clear that alexandria is, is going to fall the, the main, the, the, in fact, the entire, the entire British army, the three main corps that we had have all been completely, like, deleted. Uh, we could try a, a defense of Alexandria. I think there, there's an incentive for us to keep trying. But chances are we should probably fall back. The only problem is where do we fall back to? And I don't even know. Uh, we have these river, you know, rivers to protect. I mean, it's going to be hard for the Axis to maybe do a river assault. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think it's going to be that hard for them to cross, quite frankly. Um, but uh, we should probably at least fall back to the Suez Canal. That might be the best place to establish a uh, defense. Try to rebuild an, ar an army there if possible. Kind of fall back to a new line. But I'm going to have to rebuild units. So with, with the, uh, the 12 production points that I have, you know, the 21 that I have, rather, I mean, I could try to build up a uh, infantry I mean, I, I really do think that the best British move right now is to pull out these uh, units that we had in Palestine and Iraq, try to get them to the front line if we can. I think we're going to have to abandon. We're going to have to abandon the occupation of these two areas because yeah, um, Alexandria is just not in good shape. So yeah, that, that, British, that British attack was just everything that could have gone wrong went wrong pretty much. We can build up this field HQ. That's going to cost 10. That leaves me with 11 left. And then I can just like build up one, one unit here. That's it. That's really all I can build up. Or with 11 left, I can't even build up an infantry. Dang nabbit. Or I could try to do uh, build this guy up. That's going to be 16. All right, it costs 5. That leaves me with 16. And then with the remaining 16, uh, I wish I had some militia units. I don't even have those. Hmm. I could try to build up his infantry units. No, that's not going to work. Yeah, this is this is just bad for the for the British. Let's go ahead and just build this guy out. I think I think we're going to do a total retreat. Just uh, I think uh, either either that or we should try to hold the line. Uh, the only yeah, either that or try to hold the line. I think we should hold the line. Hold the line as, as for as long as possible. Try to try to get some reinforcements to move to move on over. So yeah, I think that's it for the British. 
Uh, Western Front Front production for the British is do 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 do. What is it? Uh, Twenty two looks like. Yeah. The 22 production uh, definitely built up this HQ. Um, we could also potentially invade Morocco and try to knock out Vichy France from the war. Uh, it may help a little bit, uh, but it's a whole other strategy that it's going to take a long time to accomplish. And we could, in theory, try to get a convoy to directly reinforce Egypt through the Mediterranean Sea. But we're going to have to move through so much hostile enemy waters. And the chances of us getting repulsed, I think, are pretty high. But that leaves me with 12 anyways. With that 12, I say we just build up the infantry. That leaves me with 8. And then with that 8, uh, yeah, I just try to keep focusing on building up infantry, I guess. Really, we probably should just focus on rebuilding up all these lost formations. We lost a lot of units. That was very expensive. Very heavy defeat there for the British. I'm actually going to cancel my builds. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to transfer five production points. Or the ten production points. I'm going to transfer those over. From, uh, whatchamacallit, from the western front to the Mediterranean front. So I'm looking for a transfer. So the thing about transfers is that they're very inefficient. So it's like an emergency supply. You know, you know you're almost like deploying extra supplies to another front. But the only problem with that is that only half of the supplies gets there. Um, no more than half of it will get there. Maybe because part of the production that was spent has also to be spent on the extra um, logistical assets needed to move the supplies in the first place, like, you know, your, your shipping convoy and all that. And uh, with the Mediterranean front, we, we just roll, we're just going to roll that die. And then that roll represents the five production points. And so it's very inefficient, but I figure it's probably better than nothing. Really going to try to maximize the, the Mediterranean front while we can because I don't want to lose, I don't want to have um, the Axis achieve any more victories. So we're going to do our best to defend Egypt to the best of our ability. But from what I can tell right now, the situation is not, we cannot hold the line right now. Um, we're, going to, we're going to have to start preparing to pull out. Um, but uh, we, we may be able to hold out a little longer. Who knows? It is going to come down to some good dice. That's for sure. It's all going to come down to the dice 100%. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, that's it for the British. Uh, Soviet production. Soviets have lost a lot of production on this turn. Uh, they're at 53 right now. They essentially lost 10 production points. So they're pretty pretty down in the dumps right now. Um, with 53, we're pretty much back to where we were in summer 1941, frankly. Well, except the only difference is that our defense of Moscow feels pretty good. You know, I've I decided to four stack all the, the main areas where the German army can break through. They can, but they're going to have to blitz pretty hard. So as far as production points goes, we're going to spend 10 on Stavka, probably 10 on the Western HQ. So that's going to already bring me down to 33 production points. I kind of want to spend the rest on just rebuilding my armies. I know the Soviets lost quite a bit too. They lost several armies. And the real question is, is where do I want to deploy these armies? Because the German army is advancing right now to, to uh, Baku. So let's build up this HQ. So now we're down to 23 production points. We're really down for pretty much nothing. Build up this unit. That costed four. Now we're down to 19. Yeah, this is going to cost another two. So that's uh, 17. Let's build up this guy. Now we're down to 15 production points. You know, not a whole lot. Uh, what else can we? What else can we build right now? 
with 15 production points. Pretty much nothing. Nothing substantial. Uh, you know, we can we can definitely build up uh, more infantry. We can certainly do that. Uh, I don't even know what what would be the best units for this sector. Maybe uh, can we deploy that tank army, or did I already do that? I already did that. Uh, but with 15, probably want to build another army. At the very least, let's do that. That's going to leave me now with the 11. Probably build up this guy. That leaves me with nine. Now with nine left, what to build? Probably just focus on all these units here. Let's go ahead and build this guy up. Or no, actually rather build this guy up. Now we're down to six production points. And uh, my infantry are looking pretty good. Okay. Armor could be better. But I have six production points left. And what do I want to build up? I would imagine try to build up another unit. I kind of want to build up my mech core. Start uh, preparing for a Soviet winter offensive. Question is, is where? And I think by this time in the war, the Soviet high command already knew effectively what, they were, what their plan was because the German army was going all out on Stalingrad. And so they knew that the priority was to destroy the German army. But let's, they, rather than attacking directly, they tried, to, they tried to envelop the city and they succeeded. They tried and succeeded uh, encircling Stalingrad. Um, so, you know, what, where is an obvious target against the, against the German army? There is, I don't think there is any because the German army has been very methodical, kind of still maintaining a, somewhat of a relative defense against the Soviets. I think the most obvious place to push would be here in the center. Uh, but that's probably where the German army will be strongest, I would think. Uh, I think there is also another valuable target um, of Rostov. If we do take Rostov, we do cut off this entire German push. You know, they're going to have to make a move on Crimea if they want to ensure good supply lines. So, so Rostov may be a good target, but the only problem is that we don't really have much of an army east of Rostov. We don't have much. I mean, I've got a few units here and there, but even in the winter, they're going to be limited. So this is a very large sector, and we just don't have an army that can fill it up. And I don't think we're going to have an army that can fill up that void uh, pretty much not until like the end of the winter to build up all these all these reserves. Um, so maybe what we do is just play the long game and try to focus on quality over quantity or actually focus on both and try to just build our army up as best as possible, as soon as possible. So, yeah, that's kind of generally what I'm thinking. I think the only thing I'm going to do with the last four I have, let's just go ahead and build one more infantry. We we'll just put it there. And that's it. Not the most original move for the Soviets, but it's not terrible. And with that, we can actually start the sequence. We're actually going to start with the Western Front since the British do still, still have the strategic initiative, which is good because at least we can then set up a defense. I don't think we should abandon Alexandria. Not yet. Uh, I think I think we're going to try to set up a defense there if we can. And we'll see if it works. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and start the turn then. We'll start with... Uh, we're going to start with the British. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to, I guess, activate the Alexandrian HQ. Right? Then I'm going to pull back this unit, send it to Alexandria, move back this unit, also send both to Alexandria. This is where I want. This is where I want to set up my defense. I know that this German unit is at level one. Then I think I'm going to reduce this HQ, and then move it across the river, right there. That's the idea. 
And then um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to activate um, this British Supreme HQ. It's going to do, it has four Supreme moves, but I'm going to transfer over at half efficiency those Supreme moves over to the Mediterranean front. So that's going to give me two more Supreme moves with the British. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these two units and actually move them into Egypt. So we're going to pull back. This is an Indian, uh, some sort of Indian Corps that was basically occupying Iraq to prevent any kind of revolt taking place. Once I pull them out, we are susceptible to uh, revolts. I think they're called revolts and uprisings in the Middle East. And it's a, di a diplomatic event that the Axis can do. And I, I actually haven't done the diplomatic events yet. I should probably, I, yeah, so we're going to get around to that. Um, so um, there's also a special move, you know, the, the road, the strategic road move is different than a rail move. Rail move typically has 10 hexes, but for the road, it is it's just twice the distance that this unit can normally move. So because this is an infantry, I can actually show you all the rule book. Probably should have had it open, right? Here we go. Uh, but if I go to Mediterranean Front Rules, somewhere around here, your front, oh, there it is. Off-road movements. No, no, we're looking for strategic moves, right? Supplies, it says combat movement. Okay, here it is. Yeah, it's called strategic road movement. And it basically can move a unit double its normal distance if it follows a road and remains within friendly territory for the entire move. So this unit can move double, uh, can move two hexes, speed of two. So uh, with the strategic road move, it has a speed of four. And I can send it to Amman right there. So that's one supreme move. The other supreme move I'm going to move is this Palestinian unit out of Palestine. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to put it like, put it right. You know what? We could actually send it into Alexandria. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're trying to maximize our defense of Alexandria as best we can with what we got. And this is all we got for the British. It's better than nothing, though. Um, but the other thing to point out is that if we can't protect the flank, you know, I don't think the Axis can river cross uh, the Nile River on this turn, but on the next turn they will. I know that their HQ is at level 2, so even if they blitz, they just don't have the range. Um, so, yeah, that's the best that the British can do. Hopefully it's enough to defend the Alexandria. And so that's that. Then, what else? Uh, then we can switch over to the Axis. Um, yeah, we're going to switch over to the Axis. And I'm going to start the Western Front uh, moves first because they follow the British. And then we'll do the Eastern Front sequence where the Axis have the initiative. So I'm just trying to do it in a, in a way where the game has it's just smooth the whole, the whole way through depending on who has the initiative. So I think, oh, I forgot to do a Pursuit. Technically, this, this one unit has um, equal speed to pursue the unit that withdrew without a rear guard. So we roll one. They, they could have scored a six, and they didn't. So there was no pursuit fire. Forgot to do that, though. And there's that. Okay. Um, now i got to decide, do I want to attack Alexandria right now, or do I want to wait another turn with the British? The British have three units defending Alexandria. I can attack with only three units as well. My units are a bit under strength, I will, I will admit. The Axis, although we wiped out the British Corps, um, I don't think the, uh, the Axis right now have really enough combat, combat power to launch a meaningful attack on Alexandria, at least not yet. And so um, I may even give it another month before we make a move. Let's, like, let's take our time. Like, what's the rush? What is the rush um, to attack Alexandria? I don't think there is any. That's the short answer. Um, now, if we also try to flank around Alexandria, it's important to know that my supply base is going to be at El Alamein. That's as far east as it goes. 
And so until I take Alexandria, you know, we won't gain any real supply. So it's almost impossible if we do a river crossing across the Nile River, anything, anything east is going to be out of supplies. Even if we try to encircle, even if we try to encircle the British, our units are still going to be out of supplies. So um, I think what I'm going to do, I think we're going to hold off for now with the axis. I'm going to activate OKW. It's going to transfer over its six supply, uh, or excuse me, supreme moves to the, to, to the equivalent of three uh, Mediterranean front supreme moves. And I'm going to bring up reinforcements. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. One. That's one, two, three. Yeah. Hmm. So let's move up this unit. One, two, three, four. I mean, it's going to take a long time before me, for me to move on that militia unit, won't it? Hmm. I also, the oh, let me, before I do anything, I also should point out that we're, the axes are also vulnerable, in theory, to a British counteroffensive. I don't think the British are going to attack, but it is possible. So I could I could move up reinforcements. The only problem is that these these, these militia units are just so freaking far away. And they're not they're not helpful for attacking, they're only helpful for defending. And they don't have there's no real there's no real good place to defend here to the east. So I had twenty production points. In hindsight, I kinda wish I spent it on the ground units here. Um if I knew I wasn't gonna attack. But anyways, with the supreme moves that we have, um uh, I think I am going to move up reinforcements anyways, just just to just to be absolutely certain that I can defend this this area while, while I can. So that's going to be one move. And let's do another move to to Brook, and then the third supreme move is just going to be moving this up. Uh, Panzer Grenadier unit, so I'm presuming it has double defense. I'm going to move it over to Benghazi, or double fire rather. So I'm just I'm just transferring the militia units over. And the only other only other move that would be maybe somewhat interesting is this Africa Corps. If I can move it back to Tobruk, it would be easier to build up. But I'm going to hold off on that because I still want it to be in range to support these formations, unless I still want to pull it back. No, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it there in case the British do anything sneaky. So yeah, we're gonna leave it that. Leave it at that with OKW. And then as far as the Eastern Front, what do we want to do? Where do we want to attack? It is September, so we don't have much left for as as far as favorable weather. So if we are gonna launch any offensives. Uh, we we only have this month, maybe the next month. I still think we should focus on Benghazi, or well, not Benghazi. Excuse me, Batumi. Where is Benghazi? No, I'm th I'm confusing myself, folks. But to me, um, and then um, transfer over an attack on on Crimea. Try to take Sevastopol. So let's activate OKH. I may even I think I'm going to send it back to uh, Warsaw, where it is unaffected by the by the winter or the mud. Uh, weather the weather restriction and so we'll be able to operate at full strength in Warsaw and um, I don't have to worry about it of course I lose air support but I think we have enough so let's let's focus on that and then I have six supreme moves so let's try to get some units from army group north as far south as we can I think it should be the number one priority um, in fact let's start I think I'm gonna start with army group center and get it over here and then try to get as many units as I can to Crimea as well. The other thing that I want to read up about is the uh, command range. I uh, wonder if we could do command range over bodies of water if it's a land HQ instead of a sea HQ, an invasion HQ. And um, I'm pretty sure you can't, but I just want to double check because um, I'm thinking about this attack on Crimea. We could use that ability right now. 
So let's see here, unsupported combat. No, these are the combats, uh, HQ, stacking limit, movement, theater HQs, command range. Now the question is over what uh, territory can they command? Supreme moves, combat support. Um, but like over what kind of territory are we talking about? Coordination, deploying HQs, command range. It says command range cannot be traced through impassable terrain, including lake, sea, or alpine. So, yeah, we can't we can't trace it through sea, which is a bummer. So I need if I bring Army Group Center, and I put it over here in in the region of, of Krasnodar, it will not be able to move up any units from Crimea, unfortunately. So that's that. So we're going to start this move, pretty obvious move. Let's go ahead and move this Panzer Corps as well. Move these two units over. And we're probably going to do two Supreme moves with both of them. Oh, you know what? And maybe maybe even move that unit. Or maybe I leave the Panzer, Corps, Panzer Army here. No, I think, I think we're fine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's a long journey. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. One, two, or excuse me, one, two, three, four. There's a faster way to get there. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Nine, ten. How about that? How about them apples? That's a much better move overall. So that's that was what two supreme moves. Or rather, four supreme moves when you combine both units, and then I have two supreme moves left, and I think I'm gonna have to spend it on. Uh... So you know what? I'm actually going to. Hmm. I think I'm going to switch it up. We're going to return one of these units to the north. No, no, we're fine. I think it's fine. Uh, then, what's the other move I wanted to do? Let's go ahead and do our next Supreme move. It's gonna be one, two. Oh, we have Briansk. No, it's uh, is that is that faster? That might be a faster way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14. So that's another two supreme moves that I basically did. And that's it. That's all we got for this turn. Deactivate OKH. And then I can move it by rail. And we're going to send it to Warsaw. So a lot of supreme moves. I'm still going to do... So this, this unit here is definitely strategic rail move. But I'm actually going to also go ahead and activate Army Group uh, South. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to blitz. Right now I don't really care how much... If it's inefficient or not, I just want to be able to uh, break through here before the Soviets have time to reinforce it with any more units. So yeah, um, I'm going to blitz. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to pull some units out, put some stronger units in, like so. And we also could use more reinforcements, I'll tell you now. But at least we have... Uh, uh, Something like the equivalent of a German army that maybe in the future can be used to attack Crimea at some point, sooner rather than later. So uh, that's that. And then 
Yeah, I think we'll keep this Panzer Corps as, as a reserve. All right. Actually, we can pull that infantry back, put this infantry there. Okay. So, yeah, we're doing a little blitz right now here in the south. And hopefully... Oh, actually, you know what? I just realized that guy can go there. This guy... He'll pull out from there, but to respect the hex side limits, I'm going to send this Panzer Corps around like that. There we go. Yep, that's much better. And um, I don't know, maybe I should attack with infantry right now. I'm attacking with a Panzer group, but I probably should attack with the infantry since they are much more cost effective that way i have a panzer corps in reserve at full strength yeah it's much better um so yeah that's it for the axis german austere army um i totally forgot to do the diplomatic events i just realized um so oh well i think we're gonna have to give it another turn so i guess that means that we didn't have the finished production so we're gonna move that over Yeah, I think the Finnish in August, they built up their units, didn't they? Full strength. And then this turn, they have three. We're going to save over. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do these battles. Uh, we're going to have an airstrike. I think I'm going to support the area to the east. Because I think that's where we did some damage. And let's go ahead and do the battle. Yeah, two battles. I'll start with the battle with Twops, see how it goes. Enemy has two infantry. They score two hits. Ouch. I don't think, again, I don't think the uh, the forest area, the mountain area has, uh, yeah, does not have double fire. Only major cities do. So uh, they score two hits. Uh, Panzer Corps will roll, followed by the infantry. We score one hit, though. So we'll, I'll take that. Then we'll start this battle over here to the east of that. So start with the airstrike. We got one half hit. Defenders roll uh, one double fire. Nice, two single fire. So they score one hit. Soviets are, not, are holding the line. The mountain infantry will roll with their double fire. They score another hit, followed by the infantry. They score one hit, so we scored three out of two. Okay. The German army is making progress though. Slow but steady progress in this area. And that will conclude the battles there. No other battles on the Eastern Front. None that I that I intend to do. Not until I'm able to move around my units. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do the Blitz phase now with Army Group South. I'm going to zoom in on this area since this is, this is the only area where we actually have combat. And um, now the plan is I can start like rotating some units. I'm going to like rotate this infantry out. We'll put a Panzer Corps in there. I think I'm I think I'm gonna actually go all in with the Panzer Corps now, at least in this area. And then I'm gonna pull out this infantry, send it back to Novorossiysk, and this guy will go ahead in there. And that way I have a Panzer Corps in reserve. I can keep on attacking with at least some extra firepower. The only problem with my setup that I'm seeing is that we don't have any unit in Salsk. Hmm. So you know what? I think this unit will not be sent over. I'm going to put this infantry there. This guy's going to move to the north. We just got to patch up that flank because it's the only it's the only supply source we've got. The enemy, I'm pretty sure, to move across the strait, they have to do a, an initial move first. So it's not like they can just keep keep moving straight across it takes it takes a little while to move across the straight so we have a little bit of time and then i'm going to put a put the infantry the second core right there yeah there we go and then we'll do the blitz phase now panzer core in reserve 
and then I'm going to put an airstrike right here with just a level one. See if we can break through. If we can break through, chances are the Soviets are going to be able to reinforce. Either that or they're going to have to counterattack. They're going to have to do something. So we'll see. So we'll start with the airstrike. No hits. Defenders roll one and one. No hits. Uh, we got seven double fire. Let's go. We scored another hit. So we'll, we'll take out the cavalry. So we did not break through, but at least we, we've made, we put a dent in the Soviet line, destroyed a Soviet core. We're also going to do the battle here at Twops. And uh, three single fire defending, no hits. Three double fire attacking, four single fire. We did score another hit. Boom. Okay, so the German, the German attack has been extremely methodical. Extremely methodical, but still no breakthrough. Uh, but we did make progress. So that's good. And we have another HQ for a blitz phase. That's very good. Okay, so now the only nation left to do on this first fortnight is the Soviet side. So we'll switch over to them. And that way we're kind of keeping the sequence of initiative consistent. Uh, they, they do not have the initiative on the Eastern Front. What do the Soviets want to do? Well, clearly the situation in the South is very tenuous. If I were the Soviets, though... I would keep trying to send more reinforcements in here because if the German army breaks through, there's not much more that we can do. There won't be much more that we can do. So the real question is, is uh, what more what more units do we want to move around? And I don't have I don't have a very strong reserve here. Um, chances are, we if we can't hold this area in the north, we're going to lose Batumi. And if we lose Batumi, this unit over here, for example, will be out of supplies. So I think I'm going to activate Stavka then. And I, since it has the uh, Supreme Moves, I think I'm actually going to maybe move this unit to a Novo to Seisk, believe it or not. Let's go ahead and do that. We're, we're abandoning the Kerch Peninsula. Sevastopol is going to have to defend on its own, but it at least has triple defense and triple fire, so it can hold out for a while. But this army, maybe we can use it to put pressure on the German flank. Something like that. I think that's what we're going to go for. So that's one supreme move. Another one would be to get this guy over here. That's two. Third one, I think, is just to move this guy forward. Like that. And then the fourth supreme move I have is probably try to get a, a reinforcement over to somewhere over here if I can. I just don't have much. Like this guy can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. Which is not bad. Or maybe I can leave it there. Put a little bit more pressure on the Germans over there. Not bad. So, yeah, that would be four supreme moves, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Probably not the... Definitely not the best so we moves, but I think it's clear that, you know, there's an incentive for us to launch a counteroffensive, maybe even from the Grozny area to, to Rostov. So, you know what? I'm actually, instead of doing that, I'm actually going to go ahead and move this unit. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's put it there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's it for the Soviets. Deactivate Stavka, even though it was level two, we still used it. And then now we can move on to the next Fortnite and start the turn again. Um, so I don't even have to switch sides. We can just start with the British again. And we can look at the Mediterranean front situation. The Axis did not attack Alexandria just yet. And because they didn't attack, well, we have more time to uh, set up a defense. Um, I think the British are going to pass because our defense seems good enough. And, and besides, I don't really have any more reinforcements to move up, even if I wanted to quite frankly. So yeah, well, I think we're going to leave it at that. Pass the British turn. Switch over to the Axis now. 
I, I will say that the uh, the Allied initiative did pay off because at the very least it gave the British a little bit of extra time to uh, fortify Alexandria. If, if they think about it, if the Axis got to go first, they would have been able to attack Alexandria no problem. So the Axis can still, in theory, attack Alexandria. The only problem is that our units are under strength. I think we could we can definitely do some damage on Alexandria. I don't think we can actually take the city though on this on this next turn. Pretty sure we can't. So I'm is either attack now or wait one more turn. I think if we wait one more turn, I mean we may not even gain a production advantage if we wait another turn, but if we can maybe strengthen our units, maybe it would be worth it. You know, try to build up these these ground units a bit more before we attack. That might be worth it. So we'll see. It all it's all going to come down to production. And uh, I don't think the British can actually build any more units in Alexandria. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but I think the Axis. I think we're going to pass for now. Before we do anything more. Or maybe not. Maybe we should attack. Uh, we just don't have that much combat power. And if we if we suffer heavy losses, we won't we won't our units won't be like completely devastated. But the chances of us recuperating for a future offensive is going to be that much weaker. So it's all going to come down to the logistics. If if our supplies fails on this next turn, then the waiting it's only going to get make the British stronger, not weaker. I think it's important to note that the British can, they do have the initiative so they can set up a new defense accordingly. So you know what? As irrational as it may sound, I think we're going to attack while we still have the initiative. Put the airstrike there, put the airstrike first, and then we're going to attack, I think, with these units. All my mobilized units, I'm going to leave this infantry as a reserve. But by, by moving, oh, actually, you know what? No. Oh. This is a tough setup, let me tell you now. Maybe I should leave. I can, I can only attack with two units, really. Um, I could try to move this militia unit up. Oh man, it is it is a hard, it's, a, it's definitely a hard situation for the Axis. Uh, even with winning the Battle of El Alamein, like we still haven't won the Battle of Alexandria just yet. And I am feeling I am feeling the supply problem right now. You know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna attack just yet. I don't think our forces are strong enough. I'm gonna wait. We'll see if that's the right move. So the axes are also gonna pass on the western front. We'll switch over to the eastern front now and uh, see what we want to do. Uh, I kind of maybe even want to still activate OKH, still try to get more more units over to over here while we still have the momentum. And I think we're going to. I think we're going to try to get some reinforcements over there if we can. I probably, I'm pretty sure I can only send over like two more units right now. But that may be just enough, just what we need. So let's go ahead and do that. Activate OKH. And then we're going to do, uh, we have four supreme moves now. So let's go ahead and move this unit. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So that was two supreme moves. And then I think the other two I want to do. Hmm, yeah, like this central front actually looks pretty vulnerable. Let's pull back from, from this area. I'm going to go like... Uh, hmm. I think we're good, we're good on Panzer Corps. Probably use another infantry though. So let's go and do one. And then this guy will move by rail. One, two, 
Oh no, excuse me. Let's put this guy over here. This guy will move by rail. Or I just leave those units you know, where they are. They actually seem to be in a pretty def good defensive position. Uh, with two more supreme moves. Hmm. I gotta figure out like what kind of defense I want to even set up. Where do I where do I want to put my Panzer my Panzer core? You know, as part of my reserve. Where do I want to put them? That's the fundamental question that I need to find an answer to on this turn in order for all this to work. So I did one, two. Let's do another move. Let's do one, two, three. And then just move one more unit. How about that? But where? Maybe this guy. We can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now here's the problem with the with the so this Soviet unit. If if this Soviet unit was a cavalry, and it's able to contest even the slightest bit of rail, our units are going to be out of supplies. That's something to be aware of. Um, but at least we're advancing on Crimea pretty fast. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to do. I did decide to use OKW OKH twice. So it is going to be under strength, but. I don't think I'm going to need it on the next turn. Well, I probably will, but I figured that uh, this turn took priority. And then, um, or, or you know what? Maybe I should. I, you know what? I think I maybe maybe I, what am I what am I rushing for? Let's let's scratch all that. I, I think I've done it. I think I've rushed before in the past, and I just end up regretting it. I'm like why, why why what's the rush? No, we're gonna we're gonna leave it at full strength. I'm just I'm just not gonna transfer any more reinforcements over there. I'm gonna work with what I got and hopefully hopefully we have enough. I think I, I think I remember why I wanted to. All it means is that our, our tax our all it means is that our tax here are gonna be somewhat delayed. And you know what? We're gonna probably just have to deal with that for what it is. So yeah, let's activate Army Group Center, and uh, let's go ahead and do a blitz. Now he has a command command range of three, which is really nice. I can even deploy it to maybe say Krasnodar still have command range. But if we break out, I won't have command range of attacking that unit. So you know what? No, we'll we'll leave it there. And then I could still move up these units. So let's go ahead and move up this guy. That's going to be like one. Can move up this Panzer core hey there. Um, and that way I can kind of contain this uh, Soviet units. I don't have to worry so much about that units. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, the other thing I want to do is let's see this Army Group South. I think we we got we're gonna have to send it back to the north. It is just completely under strength. And then um, as far as stacking up extra units, extra firepower, I think we're good with our attacks. You know, I'm gonna keep this Panzer Corps in reserve for the next blitz phase, but we do have air support. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, attack here. I guess I don't know what the Soviets moved in, so. Presum presumably, I wouldn't know. I, I actually don't really exactly remember, but I'm going to put my airstrike here on the left instead. Uh, maybe that's where I should put the Panzer Corps. You know what? I am going to send the Panzer Corps in. And then we're going to pull this guy out. Oh, we can't pull him out from that way. Oh, we actually can't pull that unit out. Never mind. Because this area is disputed. It's a disputed hex. Technically, you can't pull out units into that, that direction. And we already met the stacking limits, so yeah. All right, so let's just go ahead and do the battle. Let's see here. Battle twops. I'm pretty sure we are about to break through. Yep. And uh, we'll do the airstrike. No hits. That's a bummer. Defenders roll. No hits. We got some double fire. Boom, we scored a hit. And, okay, we scored at least one hit. 
So we should be able to take the mountains by the next turn. I don't think we're going to break uh, through the mountains, but at least we'll, no, we'll, we'll technically break across it. But we, you know, we're still susceptible to a Soviet counteroffensive that may pin us down. So that's that. Um, then we'll do this battle over here. No air support, fighting off three units, one with double double fire. So we score no hits. We got seven double fire dice roll. Boom, we scored two hits. Okay, so this 47th army is now gone. Okay, so now I think on this turn, on the blitz phase, next phase rather, I think we're about to smash. So let's go ahead and uh, move these units around. I'm gonna go ahead and move this army group south HQ back to Rostov. I'm gonna go ahead and move up this infantry north. Another infantry there. Uh, spread out these units. Uh, kind of an odd move with the uh, army group that you see there. But the reason why I'm doing it is that I don't want the Soviets. This could be a cavalry unit and it can move across the marshes very easily. I don't want the Soviets breaking out. So that's why I'm putting two units there. And then the last unit I have, it looks like I have no choice but to have the uh, Panzer Corps. So what, what, what would be the best place to put the Panzer Corps? I'm probably just going to put it here on the flank like that. Yeah. And just keep attacking with what I have. Okay. And then uh, we can put the airstrike. Uh, hmm. Let's put the airstrike, uh, I guess, in twops again. Yeah, where the rail line is. And uh, try to break through there. Any other battles on the Eastern Front? No. All our, all, all our other HQs are completely exhausted right now. So, yeah, we really don't have much. So, yeah, let's do these battles. Battle Twops, Airstrike, one half hit. Defenders roll, of course they score a hit. Panzers will roll, another hit, boom. And we've just taken Twops. Nice. Nice, uh, nice breakthrough. Finally taking the mountains. It was tedious. Nothing spectacular, but it was effective. We did break through. Now we can, the road to Batumi is open and uh, possible that we can take it. I don't know how well the Soviets can defend it. Um, so that's that. And then uh, we still got one more battle against this mech core. It does not score a hit. Our units roll. We do not score any hits, neither. One half hit, but that's ignored. And then that will be it. That's it for the Axis turn for this month. So for this fortnight, and then now, uh, I think we did, uh, did we do the British? Did we pass on the British? And now the last player to make a move is gonna be the Soviets on this turn, on this fortnight rather. And then I think we pretty much wrap up the video there. Um, but yeah, um, Soviet situation is not looking great. I, I recommend that we, we pull out, uh, try to pull out this uh, mech unit and try to set up a new defense wherever possible and try to fortify uh, Batumi. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to go ahead and activate this HQ. I'm going to save up on Stavka, and then I'm going to pull back this Mechor. I don't, I don't even know where to fall back. Where would be a good place to fall back to? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, if we fall back, we're still vulnerable to uh, uh, some kind of German breakthrough. I think I'm going to try to just completely fall back and maybe, uh, yeah, I think, I think Batumi, uh, I think we're going to have to abandon Batumi. Oh, also this unit, Novorossiysk is completely vulnerable right now. Unfortunately, its efforts had failed. It's a full strength unit. It costs eight production points. I think I'd rather send it to Batumi if I can. So let's go, you know what, we're going to go ahead and activate Stavka. I know this is a reckless move with Stavka, but I'm going to move, pull, abandon Novorossiysk. Now that these, this line has fallen, there's no point to leave it there. 
move a C supply to Batumi. And then I got one more strategic move left that I probably should use very wisely. I think I'm going to move this 45 army right there. In which case, I actually want to move this infantry uh, over here. And then actually, this mech group. I think I'm going to send this mech group to Batumi. Get that infantry there. Is that what I want to do? Hmm. I kind of like the other setup a bit better. Like that. So yeah, it's it's a reasonable defense. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, now the key for the Soviets, I'm gonna put some X markers so I don't forget, but we need to build up these uh, these areas, these towns. Otherwise, uh, Turkey may join the war. So we don't want that happening. But right now the uh, German army is making strategic progress towards Baku. Um, so we'll see how that campaign goes. So. The only thing left to do is a pursuit fire, and uh, pretty sure this unit. Uh, I think the speed is is dependent on the terrain type. Pretty sure that plays a factor, so I'm pretty sure uh, all units have the same speed. Let's read up on uh, pursue rules before I wrap up this video. That's something that I haven't shown y'all. I, I kind of presume that most of y'all are pretty familiar with the combat rules as is. But we got supreme moves. No, no, no. Rear guards. Here it is. Pursuit fire. Um, in pursuit fire, each pursuing unit rolls one die per CV. As for normal combat. However, firepower of a pursuit unit depends not on its type, but on its relative speed under current terrain slash weather conditions. And so I'm pretty sure in mountainous terrain, all units move a speed of one. Meaning that this unit that's pulling out, pretty sure both units have the same pursuit for, uh, b both units are of equal speed for pursuit. That's what I'm going to go with. And, and because of that, I'm going to go ahead and roll seven dice. And if we score two hits, now the defender still has the, the unit that was being chased still has double defense. So we scored one hit there. Technically it would be one half hit with the double defense. So no no pursuit fire that turn. And that's it. That's all there is for this turn. So definitely much less eventful, I would say, than um some of the than the turn of uh, August nineteen forty two. But we did see that uh, German army did break through. I mean, subtle, but it is an important event. They did break through these mountain ranges. So now the road to Batumi is wide open. And so now the German army could very easily take Batumi. We could very easily take Sevastopol as well. Um, we also have a new supply path, or, or not yet. I think, I think Kerch still technically Soviet-controlled. But as soon as the German army takes Kerch, you know, we'll have, we can achieve a, a, some sort of rail supply. As long as we don't lose Rostov, you know, we have a kind of a rail supply that's going through this area here. A little bit of sea supply. But mo mostly, it's mostly, yeah, a little bit of sea supply, a little bit of rail supply, you know, in, a, in limited ways. But it's not going to really open up until we either take Batumi and or Sevastopol. Because if we control each of these naval bases indicated by those black icons, this entire Black Sea would actually become Axis. Once we control the Black Sea, and essentially once we neutralize the, the Soviet naval presence in the Black Sea, we can have supplies traveling all the way from Bulgaria and Romanian ports and, and get to uh, these, these Soviet-controlled ports, uh, really just Batumi, and do it without any issues. So there is a very good strategic incentive to take Sevastopol, and to take Batumi, I think, uh, in the next winter. I think that's going to be our main two targets for the next few months. While everywhere else, we're just going to hold the line with whatever the Soviets throw at us as the Axis. Um, and now, as far as the Soviet strategy, 
I, I don't know what to tell you all. All I know is that, uh, you know, the Soviets could use a win, um, definitely. So that's it. Um, interestingly enough, Alexandria still holds. The British haven't lost it just yet. The Axis are really suffering from their supply problems. So very interesting scenario. Um, I'm still having fun. The tension's there. But we're going to wrap up this video. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you all in another one. Peace out.